Hey guys, educational video for you today. I'm going to show you three games that I played against the same opponent in the same opening, and you're going to see how they reacted differently. Now, this particular opening, it's called the Wing Gambit. It's one of the lines that I teach in my E4 Gambit course, but I have a twist to it. So the normal way that you play the Wing Gambit is one way. The way that I teach it is completely different. There's kind of a secret move, which I am going to be sharing with you in this video. And if you want all the details, it's in my course, links in the description, check it out. But you're still going to get a really good idea of how to play it, even just from watching this video. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the first game. And let me actually back up a couple moves here. Against the Sicilian, I usually like to play knight to f3, and I like to bring my bishop out. So if they were to play knight c6 or d6, I'll bring my bishop out and I'll play the bishop b5 Sicilian. That's what I have pretty good success with at the top levels. But when they play the move e6, I can't do this anymore. This is a terrible move. It makes no sense because I'm not attacking anything that I would want to capture. And now my bishop just gets kicked around and I have to really go all the way back. If I try to go here, it just gets trapped. This is called the Noah's Ark trap. And my bishop has nowhere to go. I lose my bishop for a pawn. It's not a good trade, right? So because of that, I have to have a different reply here. And I could go into like the mainline Sicilian stuff, but I don't know all the theory as well as black probably does. And that's not what I want to do. So what I've been playing lately is the move B4, the wing gambit. And this is like I mentioned, what I teach in the course, A3, and they th this guy actually accepted it, which is one way they don't have to. They could also decline it, but that's a different topic. Anyway, the normal response to this is recapturing with the bishop, and it would go something like this. Black would trade. Yes, you're down a pawn, but you've opened up your rook, and it's kind of you know long term. You have some pressure along these two files. You can attack these pawns, and it's, it's a pretty equal position. But the move that I'm going to recommend to you guys that I teach in the course, which is completely surprising, is the move rook takes a3. And when you first see this, it's like, whoa, what are, what are we doing here? We're, we're giving up our rook for a bishop. Why are we doing that? Well, the point is uh, a couple of things. Number one, this bishop's actually very dangerous for black. Notice how it's slicing across here. It's preventing black from castling. Now, they can block that off a couple of different ways, but currently it is preventing the castling. And these dark squares since black no longer has that bishop, are kind of long-term targets for us, and we can potentially take advantage of those. The other thing is, even though we're down this rook, if you look at black's rook over here in the corner, it usually doesn't do anything for quite a while. And what that means is if you play the middle game aggressively, a lot of times it feels like you're playing up a piece instead of being down the exchange when you give up the rook for the bishop. So it's, it's kind of one of those things you have to know going into it that like, hey, I'm gonna play aggressive in the middle game, I'm going to try to launch an attack, and that's how you play the system. All right, there's also a specific other point that we're going to see as we go through this game. So this is what happened. They played d5, and I pushed by. Usually I like to keep the center locked up and then attack on the king side after they castle, and you're going to see a good example of that. So here we go, d4, bishop to d3. And this is kind of one of the main standard traps with this system that a lot of people, a lot of people will fall into, even high rated players okay castles and if you would like to pause do you see an aggressive move for white from this position all right well if you had a chance to look at that the move is bishop takes h7 check this is called the greek gift sacrifice it's a common idea when your opponent castles uh kingside and the knight is not defending that with uh, on f6 a lot of times you can sacrifice the bishop and the point is that after they take you you follow it up with the knight check and it unleashes your queen and if black's not careful they just get checkmated so for example if black just kind of casually goes back here the game is over it's checkmate in five moves and it's there's no way that black can stop this they can survive a little bit by throwing in some random checks with the queen and sacrificing the queen whatever but there's no really no way to stop the checkmate even if they try to make an escape route for the king we come down and this is checkmate because this bishop, remember I talked about this, is actually playing a role. Black can't defend with the knight. Okay, so you can see how all, everything kind of fits together there nicely. So that's kind of the main idea. So because of that, and this is what my opponent played in the game, king to g6. They have to come out with the king. And the engine says it's, it's relatively equal, but practically speaking, most of the time this happens, I win the games. Like probably 80... 80 to 85 percent of the games when this happens i'm going to win just because it's really difficult for my opponent to defend uh, this kind of position so queen to g4 there's 
there's really different ways you can play this. Um, sometimes you can play h4 to defend your knight first and potentially use that later. Sometimes you can go queen to d3 check, but I've had the most success most of the time with queen to g4. We're lining up on the king and creating an immediate threat, capturing here with check and winning the queen. And it's very difficult for black. There's really only one move that they can play f5, which I think my opponent did play, yes. And it almost looks like on passant would be a good move here. But then we actually run into this crazy move e5 and it gets really wild like yes we can capture here but we lose our queen and actually black throws in this check first which is why it's good for black something like this and then they take our queen and that's why it's good for black so it's very tricky um but it turns out that instead of on passanting all we need to do is drop the queen back and it keeps the pressure on the king we still maintain the threat and notice the king can't really run the knight is preventing the king from escaping backwards okay so my opponent played f4, trying to just continue to use the pawn to attack my queen. And I played queen to h4, which I think, yeah. So this is, um, I guess this was a slight inaccuracy according to the engine. They're both playable moves. Sometimes it's better just to bring the queen up and keep the attack here. Other times it's better to loop the queen over to h4 with the idea of coming down here. So my opponent played rook to h8. And now I went back to g4. So yeah, I think it looks like it was more precise for me to play queen to g4 right away. But still, we end up with this position here. Okay, my opponent didn't see a way out of the threat. So there's this. Um, there's also, let's like let's just say they would have played queen a5 check. And I was going to block with c3. And let's just say they play a random move like bishop d7. This is the big threat. Check. King has to move. I'm coming down here with check. And it looks like the king might escape, but there's this move checkmate. And if they try to run back here, I think we just take this and this is also mate. Yeah, it's also mate. Same kind of thing like this. Okay. So there's, there's all sorts of different threats, but this is kind of the main one. Knight takes e6 followed by queen uh, takes g7. And so I think my opponent didn't see a way to stop that. Apparently the only move here was queen to f8 because... I guess it defends the pawn. Yeah, that's that's the key there if this happens. Anyway, they didn't see that. They sacrificed the rook. I captured it. There's checkmate here. They did try to get a little tricky with knight to f5. And I think what they were thinking was that I might just like, I don't know, take this or go here or something. Um, but I saw that I could do this, force the king up. And if you would like to pause, there's checkmate in four moves for white. All right, well, if you had a chance to do that, it's h4 check after the knight captures. It's queen takes h4, king to f5, and then queen to h3 check. This is where my opponent resigned because regardless of where they go, there's a checkmate. If they go here, then this is checkmate. Nice one there. If they go here, then this is checkmate. And if they go here, then this is checkmate. So really nice finish. This was a perfect example, though, of... What's supposed to happen when you play this system, right? You, you know, totally surprise your opponents by giving up the rook. You play aggressively and ideally they will castle and you can have the opportunity to go for the Greek gift sacrifice, launch the attack with the knight and the queen and hopefully get a quick checkmate. Like that's, that's what's supposed to happen. And you'd be surprised at how often this actually happens. But sometimes they either know that the attack is coming or like in this case, uh, you play the same person again and then they, you know, they've already seen it. So let's go ahead and jump to the next game against the same person. And you're going to see how they tried to adapt and play differently because they knew what I was uh, trying to do. All right. So here we go. This is game two, same opponent, same opening. And they decided everything's exactly the same so far until right here. Okay. So they remembered what happened last game or the last time we played this. And they said, nope, I'm not going to allow that. I'm going to just play G6 and shut that down completely. And so even here, you can still keep up the same strategy. Play aggressive. So I'm going to play H4. I'm going to go here, try to trade this off and, and uh, you know, attack the king. If he's not going to castle this way, then he's probably going to be stuck in the center. Or maybe this way. I don't really know what Black's going to do. But I'm going to keep up the, the pressure. So H4. Opponent plays H5 to stop me. Knight to G5. Knight to F5. C3. I'm just defending here on d4 f3 getting ready to play g4 and continue to attack and remember the point behind this is to take advantage of this amazing bishop and keep the pressure on the king 
right? Because eventually, if we go into an end game, eventually this rook is going to be stronger and this pass pawn maybe could become a threat. But right now, black has to figure out how to survive. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on. I did miss this one. Yeah, this was a nice little tactic by my opponent. If I take, they're just going to take here. I actually, actually didn't see that. Um, but I decided, you know, let's just make the, the best of it. Defended my knight and played g4 anyway. I'm still trying to, you know, attack stuff. And I have the pin here, so black can't take me, which I guess you could say that worked out in my favor that, that black took that pawn there. Anyway, I want to give you an idea of what this looks like. So now I actually have a very serious threat. That's checkmate if black doesn't stop it. And the normal way that you might want to stop it, rook to f8, you can't do, right? Because again, come back to this bishop. Queen e7 to defend? Nope, the bishop. And so there's not actually a good way to defend it. Black had to play knight to f5 and give me back the, the piece there. So that's great. Captured that. And now we end up with this really interesting position where black has the rook and some pawns, but I have a knight and a bishop. Uh, but I also have this very annoying bishop and black's king is kind of in danger. So I would say at this point, like the opening has been a success. Now we're kind of into the middle game. I'll show you how the game went. But as far as the opening is concerned, I am very happy with this position, right? Like you can't ask for anything more than this. I got a nice attacking position. So uh, the game went on and opponent did castle on the other side. And so what I decided to do was shift my focus over there, put my bishop here, cutting off squares around the king. And notice how hard it is for black to deal with this bishop because they don't have their bishop, right? And so even though I don't have the rook, I'm making use of that guy. All right, over here brought the queen back. I'm just trying to relocate it over to where the king is since it wasn't really doing much here anymore. And bishop to b5, pinning the knight. Very tricky position. Apparently I was winning here. I missed this one in the game. If I just traded that and sacrificed the knight, let's actually see this line because this looks pretty cool. Rook takes, king's got to go somewhere. Let's say here, queen to a3. Wow. And you can just see like there's a lot of threats here. Black has to give up this and then queen to b4 check. And I mean, this is crazy. But anyway, that's what I needed to play. I wasn't going to see all of those moves, I don't think. So I just decided to kind of keep building up the pressure. Queen to a3. Ah, uh, yeah, this was the game where I was getting low on time. That's what happened. I sacrificed the knight so that I could come in with the bishop. Thought I had checkmate. But it didn't quite work. I, no, I did have checkmate. I did. I just messed it up. Yeah, right here. I needed to play king to g2 to take away the checks from black. Yep. I was getting low on time. You can see that. And I messed this up. If I would have just played King G2, it's over. Black has no more good check. Oh, I guess they have Queen G5. King to F1. Then there's no more checks. Except this one. But that doesn't work because I can play Knight to C4. Blocking the check, but also pinning the Bishop. Super nice idea. Anyway, I messed this one up in time pressure. Uh, I'll show you what happened in the game. Here. Check. I did see this. So I'm still winning, actually. And yeah, I messed it up somewhere here. So, what was it? Yeah, somewhere around here. Basically fell apart. Just trying to, you know, not lose on time. So, but yeah, still had a winning position. Like I said, the opening, as far as I'm concerned, was a success. But you can see how even if they don't fall for that Greek gift sacrifice idea, right? Um, you can still play aggressively, right? So keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and look at the third game. All right, so here we go, third game. And this time my opponent tried something even different than the other two. So they took it and they played a quick knight to e7 and they castled immediately, even before I had a chance to put my bishop on d3. So last time they brought the knight out first and then they you know, had to worry about this. This time they decided to castle right away and then they played g6. So it's kind of like a mixture of what they did the last two games. Excuse me. So again, same kind of idea. What can I do? I can just keep playing aggressively, attack the king. And that extra rook is not really going to play a role in an attack on the king side, at least not right away. And so if I can keep the fight over here, this bishop is going to be playing a very significant role. This rook is not. And so you can see how it kind of feels like for this middle part of the game, like I have more pieces. And if I can make that work, hey, why not? So that's kind of the idea. All right, king g7, I push the pawn. And here... I saw a really nice opportunity. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played here and why? Well, if you had a chance to do that, uh, basically what I wanted to do initially was open up the H file, right? Because I want to get my rook involved. My opponent obviously knew that and is planning to respond with this. And guess what? They have their rook there too. And if I take it, then their queen comes over and black's actually doing very nicely. Oh, I guess the 
the uh, the knight is hanging, so I guess they would have to take with the king. But still, the point is they've defended the h file very nicely, and a trade here is probably not really what I want. I mean, the king's going to come back, and then they're going to just develop, and I'm kind of running out of pieces if I trade too much stuff. So I saw the opportunity here to play the move h6 instead, and why is this so good for me? Because when I force my opponent's king back, look at their rook. It's now stuck in the corner. They essentially uncastled their king, which <laughs> is not a good thing. Normally, you want the rook to be outside of the king so that it can like move places and do stuff. Now it's literally just stuck. It, it's literally doing one thing, defending the pawn. Actually, it's even worse than that. It's taking away a square that the king might, might want to move to, right? So you can really see how this is a powerful move. Now, I did shut down my rook temporarily, so I'm not going to be able to attack with my rook, but I felt like it was totally worth it to get um, black's pieces just jammed up like this. So knight to g5, continuing to build pressure there, queen to f3. There's this, which is defended currently, but if the queen ever moves, that's checkmate. There's also this checkmate idea. There's also my bishop here. I mean, a lot of things that um, black has to be careful for. So they did stop queen to f6 with the knight, and I decided to play bishop b5, trying to get rid of the knight. Because if I can, for example, take this and go queen f6, it's not looking good for black, okay? So that's kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, they played knight to c6, so they they want to trade this knight but keep this one, which is keeping my queen out of there. And now I had a really nice idea here, and it looks like, yeah, Stockfish likes this move as well, but there's a, there's a piece that I'm not really using that I found a way to activate. What do you think I played next? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, it's the move rook to h4. And notice black was actually attacking this pawn, so by playing rook to h4, I defended the pawn, but at the same time, I'm getting ready to go to f4 and pile up on this pawn. Because I already have two pieces, but it's defended twice. If I can get a third piece attacking that, how is black going to defend that? It's not going to be easy, right? I mean, he's really tied up. Look at these pieces. Everything is kind of bottled up. So a6, capture that, and then rook to f4. And here we go. This is exactly what I was talking about. How does, how does black deal with this? I don't know. I mean, you can't, you can't really deal with it. He plays rook to b8, trying to create a counter threat. And if you would like to pause, what's the best move for white? <coughs> well, if you had a chance to do that, the best move is actually to capture immediately and just completely ignore this. And the idea is that once I take this, there's checkmate to follow and black can't stop it. Yes, they can get a free knight, just move my king somewhere. They have no more good checks and they can't stop checkmate. So that's what I should have played in, you know, in my mind in the blitz game. I was like, well, I don't want to lose a knight with check. Why not just move it? And I have my threat for next turn. Um, turns out it's not the correct way to do it because it does allow black knight takes e5, which I guess clears the way for the rook to defend. And so black could survive a little longer. But my opponent didn't see that. I captured here. This is the threat to win the queen. And also potentially checkmate if the click like of the queen moved away. That would be a really nice checkmate. You can see everything is is uh, taken away. Um, and so what did my opponent play here? Yeah, they just took it. I took it again. I'm coming in with the rook. And there wasn't anything they could do to stop this checkmate. Beautiful. I mean, this is this is so much fun to play, guys. Like, I don't know. Even if you lose some games, if you're playing games like this and having fun, I, this is like the way to go for me. And that's why I love this rook takes a three line. It's so weird and exciting and yeah you just get a lot of really fun games especially especially at the lower levels i mean i'm playing this against a 2400 if you play this against a 1500 they're not going to see half of this stuff right so it's going to work out even even better or if you're a thousand even better you know what i mean so anyway i hope you guys kind of learned um, how that works a little bit feel free to take this knowledge and start playing this if you want of course my course i go into a lot more detail um, and a lot of other extra stuff. So, you know, check that out if you want. But even with the knowledge that you have from this video, you can, uh, you know, try it out and have some fun with it. So hope that helps. And uh, you guys learned something. And I will see you next time. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. And take care.